check one, check two, check two, check two. Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. All right, so today I am wrapping up the long-term test of the Honda CRF 300L Rally. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna be sad to see this bike go. And while I'm gonna talk about in today's video many of the reasons I think it's a great bike, I'm also gonna talk about why I'm personally, frankly, not really sad to see it go and why it doesn't really f fit my needs personally. So first of all, a huge thank you to Honda North America for lending me this bike for a long-term six-month test. It was very generous of them and I really truly appreciate it. So here's what we're gonna do today. It's gonna be very simple. We're gonna talk about what I see as the pros and cons to this bike. We're gonna talk about who I think this particular bike is for. And then we're gonna end by talking about why this bike really isn't for me. All right, before we talk about the pros to the Honda CRF 300 r Rally, first I wanna give a shout out to uh, Ben over at the Dork in the Road channel. A lot of you follow him, but if you don't, you really should, and I'll put a link below. The reason I mention that is because he just purchased this exact bike, a Honda CRF 300 Rally, for long-term testing on his channel. And I feel that since he owns that bike, he's probably gonna be able to modify it and do more things with it than I was able to do in the time I had it. And the truth is, as a press bike, as a bike that I don't own, it's a little bit difficult for me to do extensive modifications modifications because of course I have to return it to stock and give it back to Honda. All right, so what are the pros to the CRF 300L Rally? I think the first one, and this wasn't even on my outline today, but I just thought of it. This bike is really kind of unique because if you think about it, how many dual sport touring bikes or lightweight adventure bikes sort of set up like this are there really out there? There's almost no direct competition to this because a bike like the Kawasaki KLR650 is much, much heavier. Uh, over 120 pounds heavier, I believe, than this bike. You look at something like a Yamaha Tenere 700, again, that's much heavier, much more expensive. If you look at something like a KTM 390 Adventure, that might be the closest, in my opinion. Um, doesn't have the suspension travel or the ground clearance of this bike. So I really do think this is a pretty unique model, and I think that's sort of driving its popularity. The next pro I have to mention, and of course we have to mention this, it's a Honda, so the reliability is gonna be extremely above average, extremely high, and uh, people like Itchy Boots have proven and other people have proven that you know this platform is very, very reliable on long distance travel. And of course, coming with the Honda brand, you get the Honda dealer network, which means wherever you're traveling in the world, it's probably not gonna be too difficult to get parts and service for this bike. The next pro for me when looking at the CRF 300L Rally is the weight. It's really lightweight if you're looking at it as an adventure travel bike. If you're looking at it as an enduro bike or a dual sport bike, it's a little bit on the heavier end. But keep in mind, you have a larger gas tank, you have a fairing, you have wind protection, you have some more features that the smaller enduro or dual sport bikes don't have. So it's really one of the lightest bikes if you look at it as an adventure bike. Uh, a KTM 690 uh, Enduro is, I think, around this weight or a little bit heavier, maybe has a lot more power, but it doesn't even have some of the features and the wind protection that this bike does. The next pro for this bike is there's a really good aftermarket support for this bike. So if you wanna buy one of these, you can set it up just the way you want it. A lot of people have already proven this. There's tons of parts and ways to customize it, change the suspension, change the seat, different windshields, different luggage, uh, whatever you wanna to do to it, you can find for this bike. And the final pro for me really is the wind protection and the fuel range. So uh, we've kind of talked about this already, but it's really a unique model because what Honda did was they took their Honda CRF 300L dual sport bike, they put on a fairing which provides a significant amount of wind protection as I've shown in my videos of this bike, and they also added a larger fuel tank. And when you combine the fuel tank with the fact that this bike gets 65, 70 miles per gallon, uh, the fuel range is actually quite good, even just with the stock tank. So I think those things are really, really going for this bike, especially if you're comparing it to its smaller CRF 300L cousin, the non-rally version. All right, so what are the downsides? What are the cons, in my opinion, of the CRF 300L rally? Now, keep in mind, um, I'm trying to be a journalist here. I'm trying to wear my journalist hat and give a balanced view of this bike. So if you're an owner of this bike or somebody getting ready to buy this bike, please don't think I'm bashing on this bike or hating it. It's just that I always have to give a balanced perspective on every single bike I review. So with that, what are the cons to this bike? Number one for me, and I kind of got flamed a bit for this in some of my other videos, I think it's really, uh, it's not powerful. And we're at 5,000 feet above sea level. The power is not exciting, it's not fast, it's not, it doesn't accelerate quickly, it doesn't have a lot of passing power when you're on the highway. It's around 25, 26 horsepower, somewhere in there. 
So it's just going to be depending on what you're used to riding, what your expectations are. If you're somebody who really wants that kind of adrenaline rush of fast acceleration, or you want to, you know, spin the rear tire off road, and you like the feeling of going fast, this is not the bike for you. But if you're somebody who just wants to explore and, you know, uh, go around on the bike and see the countryside and do some trips, and you don't care about the excitement factor coming from the engine, then this is fine. Also, that lack of power can come in when you're on the freeway or the interstate or the motorway, whatever you call it in your country. So I found personally in my testing and other people have found a little bit different, but I found that around 70 to 75 miles per hour, and I'll put the conversion here, that seems to be around the top speed of this bike, maybe 80 miles per hour if you have a tailwind and you're going slightly downhill. If you put luggage on it and bigger windshields, you're going to even get lower than that. So I find it really quite limiting in terms of keeping up with the highway traffic uh, here in the western United States where I live, where the freeway traffic moves often at 85 miles per hour. So that's a definite downside for me and kind of puts it out of the picture for a longer distance adventure bike in my opinion. The second big downside, and we've covered this and I don't want to beat this like a dead horse, uh, the suspension is comically soft. So it's really sprung uh, approximately for someone around maybe 100 pounds. Uh, and you heard that right, 100 pound rider. So I don't know any of you uh, what you weigh, but I, you probably don't weigh 100 pounds if you're looking at this bike. If you look at the average American male, uh, and not being sexist at all, I'm just saying that that's a lot of people who buy this bike, uh, maybe around 200 pounds would be the average, around 90 kilograms. Uh, the suspension on this bike in no way, in the stock suspension in no way at all can control the chassis of this bike for a 200 pound rider. It just cannot. And if you want to argue with me, fine, but I'm going to stand by what I say. This is the most comically undersuspended, undersprung bike I have ever ridden uh, of any motorcycle I've ever tested. I don't know why Honda did it like this. I don't want to get into all that, but just be aware that if you're going to use this bike um, off-road whatsoever, and you don't want to just bottom out at the slightest bump in the road, you're going to need to spend money on suspension upgrades. And I showed how you can do this in my last video in the series. You can get something like the YSS rear shock. You can do front suspension upgrades, which I wasn't able to do on this bike because I didn't have the time, the budget, and, and I didn't want to have to mess with the fork internal since I have to give the bike back to Honda. You can fix that, but in stock form, it's really, in my opinion, not even rideable off-road for anybody who's going to go more than like, you know, 10, 15 miles an hour. The next downside for me is the seat height. So the seat height is pretty tall on this bike. It's around 35, 36 inches. Now that is helped by the fact that the suspension loses most of its travel, about two thirds of its travel, just when you sit on the bike, um, which is the only motorcycle in the world that I know that does that because it's so soft. But when that, when that suspension compresses, the seat height actually isn't as bad as it sounds because the suspension is more than halfway through its stroke. Um, so the actual seat height is not as bad. However, and I showed this in my last video, if you modify the suspension on this bike and you put in a stiffer springs or you replace the shock, you're gonna be dealing with a tall motorcycle. This is very tall once you get that suspension uh, preload correct. So beware of that. The next downside for me is the plastics here are very fragile and I've gotta make a big apology to Honda and I hope they don't get mad. Sorry, Ryan, uh, but the, the fairing down here is actually broken. Um, because I just had a, I had a light tip over here and it cracks the plastic. So this is all pretty fragile. And if you want to get crashed bars, yes, you can do that, but that's going to add cost. It's going to add weight. And there are some issues with the mounting points for crash bars on this bike. It doesn't have very good mounting points for crash bars. And there's been some issues with that. So just look into that if you're going to do that. All right then. So the question is, who is this bike for? What is the ideal rider profile for this bike? Now I want to, uh, catch something here right now. A lot of people want to talk about Itchy Boots when they mention this bike. That's fine. I, I love Itchy Boots. I think she's a, an amazing travel blogger, one of the best, and I watch a lot of her videos. However, keep in mind, she is very small, she is very light, and she is not traveling at high speeds like many of you uh, need to do. So keep those things in mind. Just because it works for her, in no way does that mean that it's going to that it's gonna be a good bike for you. So I really wouldn't use that as an example. Now, who is this bike for? I think this bike really is for somebody who does not like the crop of the heavier twin cylinder, multi-cylinder adventure bikes. You think those bikes are too big, heavy, and bulky and expensive. You want something from a reliable Japanese brand. You want something relatively lightweight. Um, you're looking to go on rides that are more exploratory in nature and not riding for aggression or thrill or adrenaline. Um, you don't need to travel at high speeds above about 75 miles an hour. You don't need to carry a passenger. So if you meet all those things, if that describes you, and I think that describes a good number of people, 
then I think this bike should be at the top of your list. Um, but if that doesn't describe you, then I think there's a lot of other good bikes for around this price point that you really should be looking at for either a dual sport or an adventure bike. All right, so I wanna talk about why this bike is not for me. So I'm kind of trying to take off my journalist hat here and give you, put on the hat of me as a motorcycle rider. So here's why I didn't really ever enjoy riding this bike. And I really, when I come into my garage and look at all the bikes I have for testing or the bikes I own, it's probably the last bike I wanted to ride. Here's why that is. And again, no offense to anybody, it's a great motorcycle. The reason is that for me, we've talked about the suspension, we've talked about the lack of power, I ride motorcycles, I'm lucky enough, privileged enough to be able to ride motorcycles for fun and excitement. This bike doesn't give me any excitement, right? It doesn't give me any adrenaline, it doesn't give me any emotion. It's a useful bike, it's, it's utilitarian, it can do a lot, it's good for exploring, it's reliable, it's affordable, so it does all those things, but it doesn't give me the excitement I'm looking for, but that's just me. I'm not saying it's a bad bike, it's just, it doesn't do what I'm looking for in a motorcycle. The little time I have to ride motorcycles, I want to be having a lot of fun. I want to be giggling and laughing and you know, pulling wheelies and, and doing fun stuff like that, but that's just me. The other thing is that for me, this bike, this is gonna sound weird, but it, it has the same kind of dilemma for me as KTM 690 Enduro. And what I mean by that is it's not quite an adventure bike in my opinion. It doesn't have the power and the features um, and some of the technology uh, of an, of an adventure bike like a Tenere 700 or a Touareg 660 or KTM 890 or Tiger 900. And it also doesn't have the off-road performance of a dual sport or enduro bike. Something like my KTM 350 EXC or a Honda CRF 450 RL. It doesn't have the off-road performance anywhere near, not anywhere near the off-road performance of something like that. So it falls in that middle ground. So I don't really see, for me, I don't really see the point of it for me. I, but again, we've talked about why I think it's gonna be great for a lot of riders, just not for me. For adventure riding, if I'm gonna be going on a backcountry discovery route or going on a trip that involves you know, a couple thousand miles, uh, I'm gonna to wanna to be on a multi-cylinder adventure bike, preferably something like a KTM 890 or my Touareg 660, something like that. And if I'm gonna be riding trail riding, um, and I'm only gonna be riding maybe a couple hundred miles in a day, I'm not carrying luggage, I wanna be on a dual sport or enduro bike that's lightweight and powerful and has good suspension. This bike for me doesn't fit either of those categories, so I don't see the point of it. But again, I think a lot of you will really appreciate what this bike is, and I'm just trying to be fair and honest and balanced in giving this review. Now, what do you all think? Please know that you're not gonna hurt my feelings. You can't hurt my feelings when it comes to this kind of thing, because again, I don't have loyalty to any of the bikes I have or test. I don't care about different brands. I don't have, I don't, I'm not like that. So you can say whatever you want, but let me know, do you agree, disagree? Am I missing the point? What am I missing here? Because a lot of people really love this bike and a lot of people are buying them and riding them, but I, I'm not quite getting it. So I must be missing something. Uh, whatever it is, please let me know in the comments. I'd really like to know. And uh, you know, Big Rock, Moto, Big Rock Moto is not just about me. It's a community of all of us. And in the comments sections, we get some really good discussions going uh, about all the motorcycles that we test here on this channel. So thank you for chiming in. Let me know what you think. Uh, I hope this review, I hope this whole series has been useful. Thanks again to Honda for lending me the bike. It's gonna go back, I think, next week. So I've got it all returned to stock. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this content useful, please subscribe, like, comment, uh, support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that down below. Other than that, ride safe, and I will see you out there.